<laughs> All right, now I gotta find something here. Hold on. He just goes, "You're gonna preach." All right. All right. No, I'm ready. Lord willing, I'm ready. Let me find my notes here. You can talk about the two raptures. I got that. No. All right. You missed a little prop there. Uh, open your Bibles, if you would, to John chapter 12. <clears throat> John chapter 12. I do love and enjoy preaching. I was talking with a mutual friend of uh, Adrian and I, Gabe Cochran. Uh, when I was on deputation earlier on, and he said, he goes, don't worry, brother, you're going to start enjoying preaching a little bit more. And I have, I really, as time has gone on, I do enjoy it more. I'm, I'm thankful to be able to preach, and uh, I'm just really thankful to have the book and have the right teaching to even be able to do this, man. It's a real blessing. And uh, uh, John chapter 12, and uh, uh, I, used to, I used to pray, I'll just say this as I premise, uh, when I was a kid, I used to pray this real wicked prayer every time a missionary presented. I'd say, Lord, please don't let him preach after he presents. He's already talked so long. <laughs> I just want to go play tag. <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's how it was. So I, 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 have to, I have to not preach long now because I've already presented and I took a lot of time. So I'll just preach. I, I promise, Lord willing, it won't be but, but a few minutes here. Uh, John chapter 12 and verse 20. The Bible says, And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And I'm just going to open prayer. Father, I just come before you, Lord. And Lord, I, uh, I just want to say that I'm just so thankful for you, Lord. And I'm just so thankful, Lord, to be able to present at one of my best friend's churches, Lord. It's something I've just been so thankful for and so excited about. And uh, Lord, I know I haven't been feeling well, Lord. And I, I know even last night, God is staying up with my eye all jacked up, Lord, and I'm just just thankful, God, that the Bible says when I'm not feeling well, when I'm weak, Lord, that's when you're strong. So I pray that maybe, Lord, you just really get in this, God, and that there would be some strength that's from you that come across these pages, and God, some food would come across here, Lord, and whatever you need these people to get. I love you, Father, and pray that the Word of God would have free course. I pray also in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I preached this morning. I talked about uh, God's senses and all that, but I, uh, I want to talk a little bit now, I guess, uh, preach for a few minutes here on about your eyes and about getting your eyes on Jesus Christ, all right? And this Christian life, it's got, a, it's got problems and there's trouble, uh, but, uh, but there's a lot of joy and you'll miss a lot of that trouble and it won't be as near as bad if you can just get your eyes on Jesus Christ. Uh, try going through a little bit of trouble without Jesus. Man, it is hard. I, 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 I tell you, one of the worst things in the world is have some trouble come in your life when you're backslidden. Man, that's rough, man. I've had some time where I've just been away from the Lord, and all of a sudden something hits, and I go, look. First, got to get this thing right. I couldn't look straight to Him. It's a lot nicer whenever there, when there's nothing in between, and I can just look straight up. God, I need help. And there it is. I like that a lot better. But, uh, but these guys right here, these Greeks show up, and they're talking to Philip, and they, just, they, just, they were just asking a question. Hey, we need, to, we need to get to see Jesus. And I don't even think, but I think that it's a little bit uh, profound. They said, sir, we would see Jesus. And the key to this life is getting your eyes on Jesus Christ. And the first thing you've got to do is you've got to get saved. That's the first part of this thing uh, is salvation. And if, you, if you're not saved, this idea of getting your eyes on Jesus Christ doesn't make a lick of sense. You say he's dead. I've never seen him. <laughs> this guy you're talking about, he's some old fable from a long time ago. And that's not the truth. The truth is I'm talking about a spiritual eye. The Bible talks about blindness. Uh, over there in, I think it's Ephesians, talks about the blindness of their heart. And that blindness, that's what you have if you're not saved. If you're not saved, this whole thing of getting your eyes on Jesus Christ, don't get me wrong, I know I'm talking about a fella that I've never actually seen before. I've never really heard his voice. But when you get saved, man, you get a glimpse of them. And through the pages of this book, those galaxies, they get out of the way. Those stars move out and you can come before the throne of God and get a glimpse of Him. But it comes with salvation. Salvation means uh, you're, you're taking somebody and you're introducing them to Jesus Christ. Turn, if you will, to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Here's a real, a real righteous fella in his own right. Real, real holy fella. This is Moses here. And Moses has been talking with God. He's been up on the mount. He's been having some fellowship here. But man, there, there's something that happens here that, man, it must have just cut him open. It must have, made him, must have just really hurt him. Exodus chapter 33 and verse, uh, verse 18. Look at him. Here he says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. He looks up to God and says, God, can I just see you? Can I get a glimpse of you, Lord? And the Lord lets him down real easy in verse 19. But in verse 20, the Lord says, and he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall... No man see me and live. <laughs> and that thing carries on all the way through the Old Testament. <laughs> Not even when you die can you see God. You go to Abraham's bosom. <laughs> Think about that. 
You know, these guys, someone as holy as him said, God, I just want to see you, Lord. And he looks down at him and he says, sorry, it obliterates you. It'd blow you away. <laughs> you, can't, you can't look on me. And that thing carries through, and all of a sudden, here comes Jesus Christ, man. You know what he says? He says, if any man sees me, he's seen the Father, man. That's a blessing. Turn, over, turn back over there to John. Turn back to John. Uh, John chapter 1. You've got to get your eyes on Jesus Christ for salvation. God's so holy, and you're too human. And there's no connection. You couldn't get there if you wanted to. But Jesus Christ is perfectly holy. And he is 100% human. He was the only one who could be a real mediator. And we know he was God from John 1.1. 1, 1, but in John 1.14 it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 100% human, 100% holy, man. You want to get it? You want to see God one day? You've got to go through Jesus Christ. That's where salvation is. Over there in Numbers 21, you don't have to turn there, but there's the story of Moses and those Israelites were messing up and messing up and God says, man, I'm going to send some snakes in there. And they go in there and they're biting everybody, man, and everyone's dying. They finally go to Moses and Moses, can you pray to God that we can be healed and that these snakes will leave us alone? So Moses goes out there and God says, I want you to make a serpent of clay. Put it up on a hill up there. So anyone that looks on that thing will live. And that thing was a type. He was pointing to Jesus Christ. Turn to John 3, and you'll see this thing. And I know most of you know this, but uh, it's a good reminder. In John 3 and verse uh, 13, look, what, look even what, he, what Jesus Christ is talking about. He says, uh, John 3 and verse 13, And no man hath ascended up to heaven. <laughs> man, that's something right there. I think about that, because all these people act like as soon as they died in the Old Testament, they went up, that they were saved the same as us. <laughs> no man ascended up into heaven yet. <laughs> They're all down there in Abraham's bosom waiting for some real blood to come down and a real pure sacrifice. He says, no man has sent it up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. <laughs> and Jesus Christ, in the perfect picture of acceptance, of saying, bring your sins to me, his arms are like this, they're wide open. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. You, gotta, you want to get to Jesus Christ? You come through this right here. That's where salvation is. That thing's amazing to me, that serpent, that thing's a picture of sin. It's a picture of the curse, and Jesus Christ said, I'll be your sin. I'll be your curse. Come unto me like this. You want to get, you wanna get, uh, get to God, you've got to get your eyes on Jesus Christ for salvation. Now, I want to I bring it more to home, because I, I'm sure that most of us here are, are, uh, are saved. So, uh, so, I'll get into this. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. And we all, uh, we've all heard sermons. If you're saved uh, any length of time, even the kids will, under, will know this story here about Peter and him being on the water, and we know it well, but I'm going to read here for a minute. Matthew 14 and verse uh, 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And we all, we've all heard preaching on this before. It's, it's as old as, old as time, man. But, but Peter's walking on that water there, and it says he saw the wind. He got his eyes off Jesus Christ, right? He's supposed to be looking at Jesus Christ. And I, I, I'll just throw it out there, man. If you've got your eyes on anything else, you'll fall, you'll sink. You have to get your eyes onto Jesus Christ. You want uh, salvation, you've got to look to Jesus Christ. You want strength in this Christian life, you've got to get your eyes on Jesus Christ. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I think we all know where I'm going here, but Hebrews 12, 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing... We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Here we go. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now that thing, you know what really stands out to me? Is that first verse says, Wherefore seeing we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. He's referencing chapter 11. He's talking about 11 where you've got this great hall of faith and you look there in that thing, you've got men like Moses and Noah and Abraham who lived a good walk and ran a good race. He goes, seeing them, don't look at them. Look to Jesus. Now listen, I'm not saying you, there are great examples in the Old Testament you can get and, and guys who followed the Lord, but at the end of the day, he says, get your eyes on me. 
And you know what? I think that, that can, I can really translate because a lot of times you start, you start looking around at people around you. Brother so-and-so's ministry or sister so-and-so. And you're looking how they're doing their thing and they're doing this, this and that. And God says, hey, hey, look at me. Right. I, uh, when, I was, when I first down, moved down to PBI, I had a friend of mine, uh, Micah Hink, was down there. Micah Hink loved working out and I want to learn how to work out, you know. And, uh, and he said something. I, I was working out with him. I said, listen, uh, you know, I, I really want to get stronger. Can you give me some advice? about working out, and he gave me the best advice I've ever heard about working out. You know what he said? He goes, you need to just look around, find the biggest guy in the room, and just do what he's doing. (laughs) And it was such simple advice, but there was a lot of truth to that. (laughs) Find the strongest guy and look to him. (laughs) And in this Christian life, it ought to be that right there. Get your eyes on the strongest guy in the room. Look to Jesus Christ, right? And like I said, I don't, don't get me wrong, I, there have been many times where it, just growing up, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's for support, I, I really did look to Adrian. I, I remember Adrian was such a blessing to me and a good example, and that's fine, there can be people like that. But at the end of the day, who's the only one who's done this thing all the way through? Perfect. Who's the only one who ran his race without messing up? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You need to get your eyes on the strongest guy, amen? You need to look to him. That's who you need to get your eyes on. Turn to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I think we we read this verse this morning. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. The Bible says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. You need to get your eyes on Jesus Christ. You know what you need to do? You need to get your eyes off everything else. You need to get your eyes off the TV, man. You need to get your eyes off that Netflix and off that YouTube. And, and I think that there's, <coughs> there's a time and a place for media, but normally you spend too much time on it. And the thing is, I remember growing up in the 90s, uh, when the preachers would be like, you wicked channel surfers. Yeah. And there's like 30 channels and you know, PBS is most of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, but now <laughs> I can pull out a phone. And there, there's everything you can imagine. I think of that passage, that weird passage in Ezekiel, where it says he digged into the wall and went through the door, and that thing gets deeper and deeper, and there's just more abominations. That's a cell phone. That's a computer. I've heard preachers say that was a TV. No, 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 that TV's past. That is nothing compared to what there is now. And that wickedness just goes deeper and deeper and deeper, and you spend time on it. And the Lord says, hey, I was tempted in all ways like you. Get your eyes off that. Look to me. I, I, I know, I think it was Sam Gift that said it, and I'll always remember this. He said it when I was younger. He said, no matter how that stuff makes you feel, you can laugh, you're watching a movie or, or a TV or something, it makes you laugh, it can make you cry. No matter how it makes you feel, it makes you feel good, it hates you. It hates you, it hates your family. And the thing is, the truth is, there's a spirit that comes off that thing. And you know what most of us do? <laughs> most of us, they, we, we say, well, nobody else, I'm not, no one else is watching this. I can hand you, handle a little bit of innuendos. I can handle a little bit of this music coming off this thing. It's no big deal. There's a spirit that comes off of it. Right. And it goes right into you. And whether you like it or not, it affects you. Yeah. And there's a, there's a spirit that comes off that thing, and you need to realize that. Now, I, I, you know what I like? Turn to uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 2. There's something in Hebrews, and I know that doctrinally it can apply to different stuff, but there's all this stuff about looking to Jesus, seeing Jesus. And I understand the doctrinal application, but man, but as a Christian, man, you can apply this. Verse 9 says, but we see Jesus. Look down at verse 10. It says, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. You know that, man? He means he's our captain. He's not only the strongest guy in the room, he's the military leader, and he's our captain. You need to do what he's doing. You need to get your eyes on him. You know what I, I think about, and, and as far as following a good example, you can look at Jesus Christ's life and how he handled things, and you can live that way. Uh, I, I, I look at the way uh, whenever he was tempted, what did he do? He went to God's word, right? Is that what you do? <laughs> Is there any scripture you, I don't, as far as I, I don't see, he had a King James Bible in his hand. <laughs> And most of the time when temptation comes your way, you're not going to have a Bible in your hand. You need it in here. You, have you hid some, hid some uh, scripture in your heart? That's what Jesus Christ had done. He didn't have to make up his own thing. We all know that. But when he was tempted, he went to God's word. Do you? Man, when Satan showed up, he resisted him. With that word, he resisted uh, Satan. Is that what you do? You just let him walk all over you? Resist him. You need to follow your captain, man. When blind people showed up, he gave them sight. How about you? 
Any blind people show up lately in front of you? God leads some blind people your way and you let them pass? When Jesus Christ found blind people, he, tried, he gave them sight right then and there. And you ought to try and give some people sight. You know what I think is a blessing? Whenever people needed encouragement, they'd show up there like that woman at the well. And the Lord gave it to her straight, but that girl got saved, man. <laughs> she needed a little encouragement, man, and he gave it to her. Man, some people come your way, they need some encouragement. You lamb blast them. <laughs> when someone needs a little encouragement, a little pick-me-up. <laughs> What about a rebuke? I think about that a lot, man, because I, I know even with the Bible, when, when it comes to preaching, you, you are required to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. And that rebuke's in there, man. <laughs> and, and I think about Jesus Christ, the, but when some snakes showed up in front of him, he rebuked him. You follow your captain's example? <laughs> you rebuke any snakes lately? And obviously the biggest one, whenever he finally uh, when he needed a sacrifice, your captain sacrificed and gave his life to you. You sacrificed anything lately? <laughs> Jesus Christ, he left a real good example. When you get your eyes off him, you'll sink, man. You've got to look at him for your strength. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. If you're not saved, you've got to get your eyes on him for salvation. And that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Because it's uh, religion's the first step to atheism. You think about that? You sit there and have a guy and he has to work and fail and work and fail to try to get to heaven and just keeps messing up and there's a, there's a God up there with a club ready to deck him. <laughs> and he finally says, man, I don't want any part of this. I just believe there's no, nothing there. Yeah. That's the thing about Christianity. It's not religion. <laughs> religion, I know we've all, we've all heard it. Religion is uh, a God or uh, is man reaching up to God, but Christianity is... God reaching down to man. Amen. We need him for salvation. You need him for strength. Amen. In this Christian life, you need him for strength. But the other thing, and I like this, is uh, we, we get to look to him because he's coming back one day. Amen. Amen. And I know anybody could preach on this. Anybody can make this a third point in a message. But, man, I, I get a kick out of this. I love this. Matthew 17. Now, here's the, here's the story of the, of, the, of, the, of the Mount of Transfiguration. And it's a picture of his second advent. But I want to show you what happens when you get towards the end of this thing. Peter says something stupid. And no surprise, but uh, he says something stupid here, trying to do something right. And they're all on their face, and this cloud's scaring them, and God's yelling at them and stuff. And verse, uh, verse 6 says, when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. I want to make an application there. There's a day coming, he's going to say, Arise. <laughs> We might be afraid, might be some going through some trials. He's going to say, arise, you're going to lift up your eyes, and you're going to see, you're going to say, no, man, Amen. save Jesus only, yeah. man. I'm excited about that. Amen. I'm excited about going to heaven, man. Can you imagine a, uh, can you imagine a city with no sin? Man, I think about that a lot, man. We were just out in uh, California, man. That's just a, that's a real hellhole out there. And the Lord was real good, man. He let us lead a bunch of people, quite a few people, Lord, which was a, which was a real blessing. I'm excited about that. Uh, and I, that was a blessing, but man, I can't, I, we were in L.A., I can't even, or, and even up in New York City, went up here this last year, man, just imagine it with no sin, and that's heaven, man, no garbage trucks, no dumpsters, think about that, no trash blowing around, hey, no homelessness, man, that'll be a real blessing, man, no more cursing and filthy talk, or lying, or lusting, no more sinful thoughts, and man, by golly, no letting the Lord down, that's heaven, man, no more tombs and no more funerals, man. That's heaven, man. You looking for that day? Titus 2.13, we, we, we know it well. It says, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And verse, uh, verse 20. I know we all, we all know this stuff here. Verse, uh, Philippians 3 and verse 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been looking for Him lately? <laughs> You've been looking for Him? That's what the Bible says we're supposed to be looking for His return. Amen. Looking to finally see Him. And that, that excites me because these first two points mean I have to see Him with spiritual eyes. And there's coming a day when I can see Him for real. Amen. And I can see that Savior, man. Amen. You know what? I think about doubting Thomas. And Thomas doubted and all that. And the Lord said, hey... There's some people coming, and they're blessed for believing in me because they, and they haven't seen me. I haven't seen them. I've been preaching here for a few years about a guy I've never seen. I can't wait to finally see him. Amen. That'll be a blessing, man. But you know what? Uh, I remember Dr. Ruckman used to say, uh, trouble is supposed to make you homesick. Trouble in this life is supposed to make you homesick. And if you're not homesick, you'll fall in love with Egypt. <laughs> you need to think about that. 
If you're, not, if you're not looking for that and looking for home, then you know what? You'll get satisfied with what's around you. Right. And Satan has done a real good job of putting that phone in your hand, putting that Netflix and putting all that Amazon stuff, all that stuff. You know what it is? It's just material stuff that's just supposed to keep you like, man, I think, I think I'm satisfied here. I think I'm satisfied. This, this will do just fine. <laughs> You're supposed to be looking for something else. <laughs> you're supposed to be. Don't get. Don't. You're supposed to stay homesick. Don't fall in love with this world. Don't fall in love with Egypt, man. There's no better use of your time and energy than living for God's exaltation, man. That's a blessing to me, man. There's no better time than just living for Him and living for His glory and looking for His return. Thanks, bud. <laughs> That's my last point. All right, good. You know, uh, you know, there's going to be some Catholics who make it up to heaven. And uh, I, know, I know of one personally, and she's an older lady, and she got saved and just never left the Catholic Church. And uh, they, they just don't know any doctrine or anything. There's going to be quite a few of them that probably make it up there, and they get to heaven, and you know what? They're not going to be looking around for Peter. Oh, yeah, I like that. There's some, uh, there's some Jews who get saved, but they, uh, they, get, they believed in Jesus and stuff, but, but they still believe in all that laws and all that stuff, and they're going to get up, and they're going to look for Abraham or Moses. There's a bunch of uh, contemporary Christians, amen. They're, all gonna, they're not going to get up there and look for their pop singers and rock bands and all that. For once in their life, they're going to be set straight, and they're going to be looking for that. And all those eyes, they'll be on Jesus Christ. Man, that's going to be a blessing, man. You're supposed to be looking unto Jesus and getting your eyes on Him. I'm going to close with this. Ephesians chapter 4. I think I mentioned this verse near the beginning, but I want to close with this. Ephesians 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in him because of the blindness of their heart. Now listen, if you're saved in here, that verse doesn't apply to you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. That, that was your old state and it's all taken away now. That blindness is gone. But there's some souls out there and they're blind. Have you told anybody lately? Now listen. I'm going to say this. It's not in my notes, but I, this has been convicting me a lot lately. <laughs> that you, and you probably, I know I do it, but you, you pass somebody, and because you were friendly or nice to them, you think that makes you a good Christian. It makes you a terrible Christian. <laughs> it makes you a nice person, <laughs> right? But anybody can be a nice person on the elevator. Be friendly and comment on the kid there, yeah, good-looking kid, uh, and get off the elevator, and you're a terrible Christian. <laughs> what about telling them about Jesus Christ? <laughs> They're just blind, they step off that elevator, that might be their last chance, and there's hell. They step off into it. Man, if only we could get a glimpse of that place. This whole message about looking to Jesus, maybe if we could just get a little bit of a glimpse of hell, figure out what that looks like, we wouldn't try to be so nice to people, and we'd be more honest with them, and tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them where to look, amen? You know what a blessing is? Is that right there? That verse doesn't apply to me anymore. I can look over here in Ephesians 2, and verse, uh, verse 12. It says that at that time you were without Christ, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. <laughs> but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You know what's a blessing to me is that blindness that used to be on my eyes, those scales have been taken away because of salvation, because of Jesus Christ. And I think of that song, one of my favorite songs, Jesus Passed By My Way. It's talking about old, old blind Bartimaeus there, sitting there just blind as a bat, just sitting there, and all of a sudden he hears Jesus coming by and starts crying out to him, and Jesus passed by and gave him his sight. That was me and that was you, amen? Who are you passing by? There ought to be some people you've passed by here lately that are just blind, man. You ought to give them sight and be a, be a, be a mean person, but be a good Christian, amen? And in all this, just keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, amen?